What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is Max and we're going to be working on Fusion 360 for practical 3D printing and this is lesson two. In today's lesson we're going to be making a holder for this magnet for your fridge or whatever you want to use it for. Um, these are pretty strong magnets and they're kind of hard to get off of something once you stick them on so we're going to make a handle that makes it easier to put on and remove and they should look pretty fancy too. With this being lesson two, if you are brand new to Fusion 360, I highly recommend you go back and watch our first video because we go over some preferences and some certain things that I'm not gonna cover in this video. We're gonna kinda move forward like you already know it. So, with that being said, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on sketch. We're gonna pick a plane and we're gonna do a circle. Now, I could set the circle here and I don't know, let's just pick something real quick. Um, I can give it a coincident constraint to put it there. And then I'm going to hit escape so that I'm not selecting that coincident constraint anymore. Or we can remake a circle and this time I can click the origin. And if I give it now a distance now it's turned black. So essentially what it did is it automatically put that coincident constraint on this circle um, without me having to do it just because I selected that spot. So that's kind of an automatic constraint. So that's two ways to constrain this. But um, let's figure out what the diameter is of our magnet here. Looks like it's exactly 20 millimeters. So I'm going to probably make this, let's say 30. Okay, so I can hit finish sketch. We're going to click the extrude tool. It already selected this. I'm going to go with, let's say, 8 millimeters. Okay, so now we have kind of a little base here. So I'm going to click on this top surface, create a new sketch. I'm going to do another circle. This one, I'm going to do 20. This is gonna put like a little riser. Okay, look, it locked it in automatically. I didn't even have to select coincident, so that's cool. Click on that surface, just this part. Um, you see how you can select the different pieces, but we're just gonna extrude just that part. Let's go six. Okay. So now we're gonna do kind of a top hat that's even bigger and Right now it looks kind of clunky, but uh, we'll add some fillets and kind of smooth everything out to make it look a little better. So now we're going to go on that surface, do another sketch, do another circle, go on the origin. I'm going to say 35. Finish sketch. Now this time you have to be a little bit careful how you extrude this. So we're going to click extrude, we're going to extrude this part, and then I'm going to click again on the center part so it extrudes everything. And I don't know, let's go eight again. Boom. So now we have, you know, some pancake like cylinders just stacked on top of each other. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add fillets and I'm going to go to the inside. And then I'm going to choose, I don't know, let's try five. Okay, that was a little too much. Let's try two. Uh, it looks a little better. Maybe three. There we go. That's kind of the shape I was looking for. So we'll hit OK there. Let's do another one. Maybe we'll do these two. That looks pretty good. Maybe 2.5. Okay. This top one right here, we're going to do a lot. So it kind of rounds over. So maybe six. Ooh, there we go. That kind of looks cool. So now we need to get this magnet recessed up inside the holder. So we already measured it. It's 20 millimeters. Um, when it comes to installing parts together, you always want a little bit of clearance between them. So I don't want to make this exactly 20 millimeters. So we'll give it a little bit of gap. 
Um, we'll click on this bottom face here, create a new sketch. We're going to do another circle right in the middle. Let's go like 20.4. That should give us enough room. Now we can click on it. This time we're going to extrude it up um, so we can cut into this body here. I'm going to give it a negative. Uh, let's see. So... Looks like seven, just a hair over seven. So we might go like 7.1. That way the magnet isn't sticking out further than the um, body. So minus 7.1. Okay, that still looks good. So now we have a screw and we can make a hole or, let's see here. Yeah, so I think instead of using the whole function, I might just draw another circle. And then let's see how deep we want to go with this. Looks like... I'm gonna go with 10 and a half. Eh, it wouldn't hurt to go a little deeper. So, how about 11? So, we'll click inside this surface that we already recessed in, create another sketch, we'll do a circle right on the origin, and we need to know the diameter of the screw. Now, I'm going to measure to the outside of these threads. We'll have to make our circle a little bit smaller, but it looks like it's 3.52. So I think I'm going to go 3. So we want it to be small enough to where our threads still have something to cut into. Click the extrude tool. Click on that. What do we say? Minus 11. Okay, so now we have a hole. And that's basically going to be it, guys. Uh, I mean, this is pretty quick and easy. Um, if this wasn't a coarse threaded screw, um, we could actually create threads. And you could just click there, and they have different metric or standard um but because this is a coarse thread screw it's kind of meant to cut its own thread so i'm not going to put any threads on it but we can go over the thread tool in a later video all right so let's save this um lesson two okay so we've saved it now let's go ahead and export it. Um, let's do a step file this time. We did STL last time. We'll do a step file. Export. Bamboo Studio. Okay, we have Bamboo Studio opened up. Let's put this in here. Hit OK. I think I'm going to rotate it. Let's see if it auto orients. Yep, that's kind of the way that it recommends you print it. We won't have to uh, print any supports on it. If I printed it the other way, um, we would want to put supports in here, which is pretty easy. You would just click enable supports. But I think this should print fine without any supports. So let's go ahead and slice it. Looks like it's going to take 14 minutes of printing time, 22 minutes total. It's going to say, it's telling us that the cost is 18 cents. Um, if you look at the model here, you see how it's got little dots. I could change that by going to um, seam and saying like 
back. And then all of our seams are there, but it's gonna leave a little line. So it's kind of whatever you prefer. If you, if you don't mind the little bumpy look, um, you could do that. Or if you don't mind the line down the middle, then you could do it like that. I kind of like the random because I don't like having a line there. Um, there is something else we could do to make it look kind of cool. Okay, so I turned on fuzzy skin. That's under the others, fuzzy skin, and I did contour, print plate, and send. All right, here's our print. It's got the fuzzy skin on it. Looks pretty cool. Let's see how it fits. All right, well, that looks pretty cool. Let's go test it out. All right, let's stick it on the fridge. And we'll probably go over this one in a future lesson. This uses those same types of magnets. All right, well, that's all we have for this lesson. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time.